From Elliot Spitzer to South Carolina Governor Mark and Jenny Sanford split to the marital woes of Tiger Woods. Prenuptial agreements are being looked at quite closely these days. Catherine Dickerson is a, is a partner at Smullen Plevy, a law firm that is seeing an increase in requests for prenuptial assistance. I would imagine so. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Uh, my, my first question, you know, prenups uh, for years, it just sounded like something that rich people were uh, involved in or, or one rich person uh, if they were going into a marriage with someone who didn't have the same amount of wealth. Uh, how common are they becoming now for average people? Actually, they're becoming increasingly common, in part because now we have a much greater incident of second marriages, people who are going into their second marriage with children whom they want to make sure that they um, safeguard their inheritance. Mm -hmm. Prenuptial agreements don't deal just with the incidents of divorce, but also who inherits. So it's separation, divorce, or death that the prenup addresses, as well as how couples arrange things financially between themselves during the course of marriage. We have people who are delaying their marriage, who have accumulated a lot of wealth before they get married, and so they don't want to lose that should the marriage not end in happily ever after. Mm -hmm. And because there's so much, um, well, to be kind, the more experienced, <laughs> they have a better appreciation of the financial entanglements that their peers might have gone through when their marriage has ended, and so they're more financially savvy. So someone who, who is watching this, perhaps, and considering getting married, how does someone know when, when, they might be, when they might need a prenup, or might be a good idea for them? One of the things that they need to consider is who else in their lives they want to take care of. Are there parents? Are there children from a prior relationship that they want to look at? They also need to consider their spouse mm -hmm. because it might be that they're marrying someone who has significantly more assets than they do. And so what are the risks of marriage? I think it's one of the interesting things in the Tiger Woods marriage that when she married him, she knew in part that he'd be traveling a lot, that mm -hmm. part of his job required him to travel. And so that was one of the risks that she ran, knowing that she, he would spend a lot of time away from her, away mm -hmm. from the children. And of course, after the children, she couldn't travel with him. She did travel with him a lot, and that's one of the things that couples do. You raise an interesting point because, uh, you know, I think we, we tend to think of, you know, uh, and I'm, I'm generalizing here, a rich person going in and saying, well, I want to protect my assets in case this goes sour. I don't want this other person to get everything I've got. But someone who does not have the level of assets as the other person may want to prenup as well so that they're taken care of in the event of a divorce or separation or something like that. Here's the other question. If... Are, are these contractually binding? Because you hear time and time again about a case comes up and then someone's fighting their prenup agreement saying, well, it shouldn't stand. Well, it depends, of course. They're contracts. And so, like any other contract, depending on how the parties negotiated and entered into it, the contract could or could not be found binding. If you're signing your prenup two hours before your wedding and someone is saying to you, well, if you don't do this, you're going to be embarrassed in front of all your friends and mm -hmm. family, and there's a certain level of duress, then that's an argument for any form of contract, whether it's a prenup or not. Similarly, if one person is significantly more sophisticated and we have one person and we have the other person who didn't have the opportunity to see an attorney or consult no. with an attorney and they were just signing something without educating themselves or having the opportunity to educate themselves before they sign it, then that's also grounds to contest a contract. In a case like the Tiger Woods case, uh, let's let's assume they had a prenup and uh, you know all the parties read it and understood it and all that kind of thing. Uh, if the marriage ends because of infidelities, that type of thing, does the cause of the dissolution of the marriage affect the prenup? Amazingly, that's one of the great things about a prenup. It doesn't. You contract around those rights. Mm -hmm. You contract around the rights that you would have if you had gone to court and alleged, for example, that there was fault on the grounds of one or the other party, and that result in the dissolution of the marriage. One of the things about this form of contract is that it anticipates, it has to anticipate what will happen if someone gives up their employment and stays at home with the children, what will happen if you have to travel and give up your work, that sort of thing. And so you waive your rights in court mm -hmm. for this relief in this contract. All right, very, very interesting. Catherine Dickerson with Smolin Plevy uh, of Vienna, Virginia. Thank you very much. We're going to have to have you back in another time because I understand parents are now insisting that their, ch are insisting that their children uh, get prenups and sometimes gifting them with something like that. So we'll talk about that another time. Thanks for coming in. Thank you.